Yeah, you know, uh, the debate between foreknowledge and free will ah, and God's go. sovereignty was going on long before Christ. Um, and Cicero was one that definitely influenced Augustine. And he had to reject foreknowledge in order to get there. So um, I make it pretty simple when I, when I tell my students that the real question is, is foreknowledge causative? Now, this is a... Uh, we have discussed this for decades, since Radio Free Geneva started, whatever it might be. We have discussed the assertion that God can have passive foreknowledge of future events. So in other words, the assertion you're going to hear is that you can know something is going to happen without causing it to happen. And the example that's going to be used is human knowledge. Okay? So uh, Hank Hanegraaff would argue like this back before he went off into Eastern Orthodoxy. Many people who promote, for example, a simple foreknowledge view, uh, will say, this is the nature of God's knowledge of future events as well, is that he knows things so well that he knows future events, but he did not determine future events, which then leads you inevitably to the question, who did or are they all uncaused? And if they are uncaused, how can God have future knowledge of them? The open theist says he can't. The open theist recognizes this doesn't actually work, that you're asserting something, but you've removed its foundation. The foundation for God having infallible, exhaustive knowledge of future events is that God is the creator of time itself and everything therein. That's the one thing that these folks cannot possibly believe. They reject that. But as a Southern Baptist, and I don't know what Ken Wilson's current church membership is, and I don't honestly care that much, but um, Leighton Flowers is a Southern Baptist, and the Southern Baptists have specifically determined that open theism is outside the bounds of the Southern Baptist Convention. So he can't go there. He has to confess that God has exhaustive knowledge of future events, including the events of free creatures. But why? How can God have that knowledge? Well, God just looks down the corridors of time. Yeah, but that you, you can't look at something that does not exist. You can't look at something that is theoretical. And so when you press the issue, you go, okay, so God knows infallibly what you are going to have to eat for dinner on Christmas Eve 2021? Yes or no? Now, if you say no, he only knows big events. He only knows there's not going to be a nuclear exchange that's going to wipe you out between now and then. Well, how does he know that? Because something like a nuclear weapon, if one of them is to be triggered, there's going to be many, 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 many people involved with that. There's going to be all sorts of decisions that are going to be, have to be made on the part of human beings. There's a lot of free will going on there. And if he knows what I'm going to have for dinner, then he knows all of the surrounding things. Think how many free will actions I and tens of thousands of other people, hundreds of thousands of other people, will have to experience before Christmas Eve of 2021. You say, like what? Okay, let me give you an example. Uh, I remember years ago, I was riding northbound on 51st Avenue on my bike, and 
I was passed by an elderly couple in a little pickup truck. It was an, I think it was a Saturday morning. Wasn't a lot of traffic. And as I watched the pickup truck and I saw the upcoming light, I all of a sudden realized they're not slowing down. He doesn't realize the light is red. And my eye sees a full size construction pickup truck, a full size construction dump truck going westbound. They're going north. And it's amazing how fast your mind can do math, <laughs> um, trigonometry. Uh, and I'm, there's nothing I can do. I'm on a bike. And I have a horn to honk. Um, and I watched those two vehicles plow into each other. I'm not sure the couple survived. There was a lot of blood, so I don't know. Now, I will, Lord willing, but in the normal course of events, will ride my bicycle through and drive a car through many intersections between now and Christmas Eve of 2021. And if I do not get hit, there are all sorts of free will choices that have to be involved to keep me from getting hit. So what if someone chooses in their free will to get drunk and to run the red light while I'm going through on the green light? Then I don't live to have dinner on Christmas Eve. So that free will action could falsify God's knowledge of what I'm supposed to eat on Christmas Eve in 2021, right? There are all sorts of those types of, of choices that will determine whether I live to Christmas Eve of 2021. And so if you say God does know what I'm going to have for dinner on Christmas Eve of 2021, that means he knows all of those decisions, and no one can make a decision other than the one they made, which will result in my having that dinner on Christmas Eve of 2021. That means the entire fabric of time has been woven by creation itself. Right? So, it is not the foreknowledge that causes the action. The foreknowledge flows from the act of creation, that God is the creator, which includes not just the primor primeval, primordial condition of the universe, but that's what gives God the right to be able to say, false gods can't tell you what's going to happen in the future. I can. That's what makes him God and us mere creatures. So, foreknowledge isn't causative, but it flows from the one cause, God's creation. So, when someone says, I don't have, we don't need that decree stuff, that decree stuff's bad. God just has foreknowledge. That's not an answer. That's a, duh, I know. Can we get to the next? Because philosophers and Christian philosophers have been writing and talking about this stuff from the beginning. From the beginning. So if you're just repeating the surface level, oh, God just knows what's going to happen in the future, you're, you, you haven't even gotten into the, the, the topic yet. The question is how? How does that work? How does he have that knowledge? And if all you can do is say, it's a mystery, then you have no ground for criticizing someone who says, actually, we know more than that. Here's the revelation that says that. But if you say it's a mystery, you have no basis for criticizing someone who says, well, the basis is given in Scripture, and it's in God's sovereign decree. Because you're out of the game. You said, I don't know. And once you say, I don't know, then you've got to stop telling people that they're wrong about stuff you, that you don't know about. So, with that in mind, here is the simple causation argument. 
Notice that what it requires is that God's knowledge partakes of the same nature as our knowledge does. And that is dangerous and is dangerously untrue. Is it causative? Because somebody knows something's going to happen, does that make it happen? Is it, right. Does it is cause it, it to happen? Right. And so I take a book or I take my glasses and I say, all right, given all that gravity is going to work and there are no exceptions in this case, if I let go of these glasses, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to fall. It's going to fall, right? right? And so I said, you're right. I drop it. And I said, you just caused those glasses to fall. <laughs> and you go, wait a minute. <laughs> Something's wrong with that picture. And they're right. Something's wrong with that picture. Right. Foreknowledge is not causative. It's simply foreknowledge. Right. Well, I love to, John Lennox's... Uh... Foreknowledge is not causative. It's just simply knowledge. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Very important to distinguish that omniscience. I like to point out that God is atemporal, atemporal that he is living in the past, in the present, in the future, all simultaneously. There is no foreknowledge to God. I mean, that's a human anthropomorphism. It's a term we right. use. To think of I like have looking into the future, right. Yeah. So he, he's living at all. So, uh, again, when you look at does God cause something to happen, um, nobody believed he caused everything to happen except the Stoics and the Gnostics and the Manichaeans. Okay. D you seeing this now? Um that he caused all things to happen. There is no connected, coherent concept of a personal, self-revelational, triune deity that exists between Stoicism, all the multiple forms of Gnosticism, and Manny's wild conglomeration of Iranian, Zoroastrian, uh, Buddhist, Christian mishmash stuff. To connect them in that kind of simplistic fashion is foolishness. It is, it is misleading. It is inaccurate. It is indefensible. But you're listening to it. Okay, you're hearing this. Right? Okay, just want to make sure. The idea of God as creator, monotheist, monotheistic God, triune revelation, revealing his glory, honor, and power is not found in Stoicism. It is not found in Gnosticism. It is not found in Manichaeism. In any way, shape, or form. To say otherwise is to engage in sophistry in its worst level. Uh, those groups, Christians, again, held to a general sovereignty. Uh, that he didn't plan every detail of the universe to happen as the way he wanted to happen. He gave freedom. That he gave, this is going to happen. I'm going to prophesy this through my prophets. This will happen. How do you know it will happen? Here's, here's a good example. Let's, uh, here, here's a good example. What is one of the key prophecies that in modern New, uh, Old Testament studies is taken as evidence that the book in which it is contained was written after the events of prophesied? I'm referring to the fact that the prophecy of Isaiah specifically mentions Cyrus as the king who will free the people. Gives a name. How can that be? That's impossible. God can't know that. Now, I don't know what Wilson's view on that is. There are a lot of people, again, you go to the Christian bookstore, you discover this, that believe that second Isaiah and that that was written after Cyrus. Okay, so that's what you're going to find, a bunch of commentaries. Just warn you ahead of time. I don't know what his view is on that, but let's take the prophecy, because he just said God's gonna, God prophesies about stuff, so let's take that as a prophecy. Isaiah says Cyrus is going to do this. 
Can Cyrus do anything other? And you might say, well, in that one instance, okay, in that one instance, then, then God's, yeah, he can't do anything other than that. So in that one instance, God's sovereignty is going to overrule human freedom. But, but in everything else, it, 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 God just lets things happen. Do you really think that Cyrus's letting the people go was just simply a one-day, one-person decision? Uninfluenced by anything else, uninfluenced by what's going on in the world, by what wars he's fighting, the political situation. And so I've used an illustration over the years, came up with it probably right after my, probably right after my first kid was born. And you start dealing with the reality of toys left on the floor. Um, what if one morning Cyrus, um, the great king, um, gets out of bed and one of the little princes has left the ancient equivalent of a Lego block, you know, all the real sharp ones, on the floor next to the king's bed. And the king's royal foot comes down upon the Lego block and the royal anger is greatly aroused and he picks up the ancient equivalent of the Lego block and he looks at it and realizes it was made by one of those Jewish slaves from Jerusalem. And so he was that day going to let them go, but now he's mad. And so he decides not to and turns Isaiah the prophet into a liar not possible? Someone else couldn't come and influence the king against that decision? They make the free will decision to do that? You see, all these decisions, all these acts in time are complicated webs of free will decisions. And so if you're going to say God can prophesy what's going to happen amongst men, you can't do that and then say, but everything else is just freedom. This general sovereignty is a non-working sovereignty. That's the problem with it. It just doesn't work. You haven't thought it through. 